Um, we are fortunate to have Dr. Peter Cass from Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney, mm -hmm. who is the Director of Emergency Training, and he's going to talk about a very important topic, seizures, syncope, sudden collapse. Having the education and the knowledge that we need when we enter into that day before we see that patient is paramount. It can make a significant difference to the way you manage your patient. It can make a significant difference to their outcomes. So case one, a 25-year-old male has a syncopal episode during a lecture. He is sitting, listening to this lecture. The only past history has a family history of his father dying suddenly. Case two, an 80-year-old woman standing up in Greek Orthodox Church in front of me collapses. Her daughter states she saw her having a fit. Case three, a 60-year-old male presents following a syncopal event after going to the bathroom at four o'clock in the morning. Case four, a 45-year-old male collapses, takes a few minutes to wake up and then is confused. Straightforward. <coughs> These cases, excuse me, you will be able to diagnose immediately. Let's have a look at another case. 52-year-old male comes into our emergency, brought in by an ambulance after a collapse. Sitting at the kitchen table, reading the paper, next thing he knows, he wakes up on the floor. He has a vice-like headache, he has pins and needles down his left arm, and he has atrial fibrillation. This is the story that's handed to me by the resident. Case 6, a 62-year-old woman comes in. She goes out to buy some lemons, she feels a bit giddy, has a sudden pain in her upper back collapses. ECG is normal, she is borderline, well hypotensive, 90 is her blood pressure, 90 millimetres of mercury when she comes in. Have you taken a good history? It is the key. The problem that we have is that syncope is a symptom, it's not a disease. It's the result of something and so we've got to be very careful that we don't miss the causative factor. Our job really is to risk stratify our patients. We have to work out, have they had a fit? Have they had a faint? And what's this faint due to? Is it one of those bad cardiac things that's going to kill them? And the morbidity and mortality is significant. Or is this going to be something very, very simple that we can discharge the patient with? <laughs> So what's the pathophysiology of this? Nobody really understands it. However, this is what we believe sort of happened. There's some sort of central nervous system trigger that causes a vasodilatation in your lower limbs. So your blood starts to pull. So there's less blood going to your heart. The heart responds to this by actually beating harder and slightly faster. The receptors in the wall of the heart pick this up and mistakenly diagnose this as hypertension. They then send back a signal that vasodilates you further or gives you some sort of parasympathetic response so you brady down. A faint. Syncope is usually associated with some sort of noxious stimulant, if you have a look at it. There should be a prodrome in most cases, and the prodrome is, oh, I'm sweating, I'm nauseated, I'm a bit lightheaded, I'll sometimes have a dimming of vision, or my vision kind of went a little bit and it was, I couldn't quite see very well. I've got some spots. They get giddiness. They don't get rotational vertigo. Okay? And that's a really important discriminant, because rotational vertigo will point towards the ear or the central nervous system, posterior circulation. The patient will wake up quickly. This is really important and a discriminator between this and a fit. And the patient may still bite their tongue, just as they do in a fit. But they will bite it in a different area. They will bite the anterior part of their tongue rather than the lateral part of their tongue. The confounding part of this is that in the elderly, when they have a faint, some of them will still be out of it for a few minutes afterwards as well. So you can't differentiate between the two. But age is a predictor of morbidity and mortality on its own. It's enough for you to take further steps with these patients. They'll come to you and say, oh, I saw them collapse and they had a seizure. And I'll say, well, what, what did that seizure look like? Show me. And they'll say, oh, the arms were doing this. Okay. But if you decide that it's syncope, You've got to work out whether it's primary or secondary syncope. And there's all these types of causes. I always ask a question. 
because I'm not a very clever person, so I've got to keep my head thinking. Could this be something else? Even though I think I've got the diagnosis just right, could it be something else? 13% of patients with a thoracic aortic dissection present as, with syncope as their only complaint. If it occurs, if it's sudden with no prodrome and it occurs from a sitting position, it is cardiac unless proven otherwise. Give him 200 or 300 joules or whatever it was. We used to go for maximum joules. Okay, jump on his chest. So we're pumping on his chest. We gave him about 30 seconds of, of cardiac compression and his heart went again. Because he had cardiac stunning is what happened after the shock. He wakes up, the propofol's worn off now. He wakes up and he says, oh, what happened? My chest hurt. So nothing, pretty uneventful situation really. <laughs> I'll let the cardiologist discuss it with you in the morning. So. Tilt table testing. If your patient comes in with significant issues of syncope and we haven't quite got a cardiac cause, or we have got a, they do have cardiac history, but it's not a cardiac cause that's causing this, sometimes a tilt table test is what we do. And the tilt table test takes them from a horizontal position and gets them up into a vertical position and says, don't worry, I fix it, they've seen this before. And say, as she's on the ground, he does this. Just as she opens her eyes. <laughs> All right? So now I've gone from this godlike figure to what do you know as a doctor? What they teach you in medical school? You don't know a simple thing like this. <laughs> Opportunity gone. Okay. 62-year-old woman that was going out to get the lemons for a gin and tonic that we spoke about, felt, the, you know, felt a little bit giddy and then passed out, had this pain in her back. So my registrar is thinking she's got a thoracic dissection or something. Let's take a story. The patient goes out. He's in Sydney. Temperature was 36 degrees. She feels the heat hit her as she walks out the front door. She's walking for a few minutes, she's profusely sweaty, she a bit, feels a bit dry, and she starts to feel a little bit giddy now, like I'm gonna pass out. As she's feeling giddy, she's having an anxiety attack. These are the anxiety attacks she's had since her son was brutally stabbed to death by his female partner. To me, that's a significant part of the history. So our job is to risk stratify. Work out, is it a faint or is it a fit? If it's a faint, think of the cardiac causes. Is it sudden with no prodrome? Go cardiac. Do they have rotational vertigo? Think neuro or ear causes. Don't miss those two. If, you miss a, if a vasovagal happens, it happens. But if you miss a cardiac, their mortality approaches 30%. They're the guys you've got to be careful of. <laughs>